It is an amazing day today. The sun is shining, the birds are singing. There's no rain. This could be the moment we've been waiting for The chance to feel alive Nothing's gonna stop us, nothing's gonna talk There's nothing like we've ever seen After all this rain, I am so happy that we have this. I'm taking advantage of the nice weather to get ready for the Broomfield Antique Fair, which is next week. My mother's shed is my warehouse, basically. Not a very big shed, so it's not a very big warehouse, but it's got all the merchandise that's left from when I had a store. I want to try to bring everything I possibly can, so I'll probably be pretty much emptying my mother's shed into this bus. I'd have to do it whether it was nice weather or not, truthfully. Last year, Broomfield was kind of a disaster for me, so this year I want to do it completely different. So, yeah, that's the mission for today. Getting ready. Well, my eyes are probably looking a little hollow right about now. I've been awake all night, packing for Brimfield. Sun's gonna come up soon. I had to hustle because rain was predicted for 9 a.m. So I was trying to play beat the clock because I would rather do 50 trips in the dark without rain then 25 trips in the daylight with rain. So yeah, trying to get it all done before that rain, but the rain's here now, so try to get a little shut eye before I have to leave to go to the big show. Check this out, I got a lot of stuff. There's more coming. The chairs aren't even in here yet. I got a set of four 200-year-old chairs. They're awesome, but you know, people don't appreciate a 200-year-old chair these days. Because people had little asses 200 years ago. And now I'm going to go to bed. Good night. Brimfield tomorrow. Yee! If you don't know about the Brimfield Antique Market, this is something that is worth staying up all night for. You know, one of the most famous antique markets in the country. It's where they shoot a lot of episodes of Flea Market Flip. And I'm going to be selling there all week, which is really exciting. I've, this is my second time selling there. And the first time I was beset by all kinds of problems because that was right after the local Ford dealer put gasoline in my diesel truck. So I was having so many problems with the truck. I was supposed to go on Monday to set up and the opening day was Wednesday but I didn't end up getting there till halfway through the day on Wednesday so I missed the whole opening day and then even when I went there I had to be followed there by a mechanic because we didn't know if I was gonna make it because the bus had been breaking down so much we are in Grimfield and as you can see, it's raining. Rain, rain, go away! Come again another day. So this is Grimfield. All of these areas to the right and the left are fields, as they call them, which are different, um, different antique shows, basically. Um, they open on different, there's like staggered openings. You know, they open anywhere from 6 a.m. to, I think there's one even that opens at 11 a.m. Um, some open tomorrow, which is Tuesday, and others don't open until Wednesday, which is the one, the field I'm in opens on Wednesday. And the field I'm in is called New England Motel. And they actually have a motel there. And it is in New England, which is where we are. There's Quaker Acres. See, I know when I'm at the right one because my field has a food court in the front with green and yellow umbrellas. Right now they're down, they're not up yet because the food court doesn't open until Wednesday, I believe. But uh, I can still see it, I know where I am because I see those umbrellas. So I'm going to turn into this driveway coming up. Not the only one. There's people ahead of me. Gotta check in. Wow, look at that. Hi. Hello. Hello. I need your packet. 
Yeah, I need my pack. I'm John's wife. Oh, hi. Nice to meet you. Thank you. And um, I got here I so late last year. I'm so excited that I'm actually here right. on Monday today. Uh, and I'm the same space as last time, right? I, I don't know okay. that one. <laughs> Unless he told you that's just that you paid him. Okay, for got it. PIF. All right. I, yeah, I think I'm the same as before. Thank you. He would have told you. Yeah. Thank you. And you know where the office is if you have any questions. I do. Okay, nice Thank to meet you. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you, too. Nice people. I always like nice people. Then again, who doesn't like nice people? Oh, there's some cool stuff, man. I wish I could buy all of this. I wish I could buy everything. Well, maybe not everything, but you know. I wonder if I've got the driftwood guy next to me again. Oh, it doesn't look like it because there's a tent. Oh, no, wait, no. Yeah, I think I do have the driftwood guy. The tent is... Oh, yeah, no, I got a tent next to me. Hmm. Okay, I must be not in the same place as before. Oh, yes, I am. Hmm, here's my space. But it's taped off with caution tape. I'm just going to take, I think this caution tape is to keep people from parking in my space. So I think I'm just going to take it down, I guess. I don't know. Okay, I guess I should confirm. I'm going to go to the office and confirm where I'm supposed to be. I think I'm 171. I'm going to go around and see. How am I looking? How's it look? Am I going to make it? in here, but lovely controlled chaos. I'm so happy to be here. how we want to park since we don't have an open field next to us. Oh, now we have to wait. Too bad I didn't do it the first time because now I'm behind this U-Haul. And I feel like it's the polite thing to do would be to shut off my engine while I wait. Well, it's nasty and rainy, and I'm stuck behind a big truck, who I think is stuck behind another big truck, but I'm here. I got a working bus. It's awesome. I got my puppy dog with me. Take a look at him. Cowboy. Hey, cowboy. 
I'm just so excited to be here. I'm just so, I'm so bummed that it's rainy. My sister said there's a nor'easter coming and I hope she's wrong, but she might not be. I get it that we're all kind of in the same boat, but I'm right around this corner. If this dude could just pull up a little, let me see what's going on. So I got the guy to move. I came around the corner and let's back it up a minute. Did you notice this first time around? Yeah, neither did I. It's pretty deep. Yep. I got stuck. Really, really stuck. When I tried to rock it, just sunk in further. I went by the office and they said they'd send the tractor over to try to pull me out. The lady in the tent next door said, well, why did you take the tape down? That's why the tape was there, because the ground was too soft. Well, I didn't know that. Now you tell me. You watched me take the tape off, and now you tell me? Now that I'm stuck. Well, they really did send a tractor, and he pushed, and he pulled, and he got me out, too. And here's the drowned rat herself. Hi. Yeah, it's a little wet here, and um, I just barely got out here and set up the tent. I still have to put one wall up, but what I've decided to do for tonight, because I got to get everything out of the bus so I can sleep in there. It's so packed that there's no room. So I've got to get everything out. So I'm going to put, or at least some stuff out. So I'm going to put stuff on these tables in here, leave them in the plastic boxes that they're in, and hopefully everything's going to be okay for the night. Hopefully. And then tomorrow I'll set up. I'm not even going to try to set up tonight. I'm just going to chill out. That's what I'm going to do. Can you guess which tent is mine? Yeah. What can I say? I don't have the conformity gene. I try. Just don't have it. And now... Yep, there I am. May have to move again tomorrow morning. Just the bus, not the tent, hopefully. But maybe the maybe the tent too. Here we are. And what do you see inside? I don't know if you can really see this, but welcome to my rice patty. Well, it's morning now. I was sleeping on an air mattress and it was a half inflated air mattress because my pump failed. Not super comfortable, but for some reason I slept really well. So I guess I just must've been really tired from all the crap that happened yesterday. I was kind of hoping I'd wake up and it would all have been like some kind of weird nightmare and my space would look just fine and everything would be perfect, but that didn't happen. I still have a space that's basically a rice paddy, totally flooded out. And the guys that own the place, um, Bob and John, came to look at it and they agreed like, yeah, it's flooded out. You're not going to be able to sell in here. If they say it's not workable, then it's probably not workable because they want, the, they want you to stay because they get paid if you stay. They don't have another space to give me either, so I'm going to start packing up and going home. Cowboy needs a walk, so we're just going to go stroll around for a little bit. I'm not in a super hurry to get back on the road because it's not like I planned anything else in this time. It sounds like my live tonight is going to be from, not Brimfield, but my mother's driveway because that's where I will be offloading back into the shed all the stuff I just spent the last three days packing into the bus. Fun and games. You know, sometimes I have to actually like look in the mirror to make sure there's not like a literal black cloud over my head. This could be the moment we've been waiting for it, the chance to feel alive. Nothing's gonna stop us, nothing's gonna talk this, nothing like we've ever seen.
Okay, so new plan. Maybe. I mentioned to the people on the end who have one of those big rental tents that I was leaving because my space was flooded and I was bummed out about it and they decided that their tent was flooded too and they went and asked for their money back. Probably because it's supposed to rain this week and they thought, hey, we might not make money anyway, so why not cash in while we can? So John, the owner, came to me and said, hey, if you want, you can have their tent. Well, of course, this all came after I'm already packed up, but... I'm here, you know? So my first reaction was, yeah, hell yeah, I'll take it. But then I thought it through, and there's a couple of obstacles. One is, that tent takes up the whole space, so I can't have the bus. And my selling plan was to sell out of the bus, and also from my small tent, I've only got five dinky little tables. So I'd have to do a lot of rethinking. Then again, I'm pretty good with space, so I'm not really too worried about that. I think I could make that work. It might even be kind of fun. But then, besides that... I gotta have power for tonight because last night it was really cold. If I hadn't been able to run the heater, I would have been miserable. So the problem is my shore power that I was hooked up to last night is back where I was parked before where I was sunk in the mud. So I can't go back there and I can't park in that space, which there's also shore power there, but I can't fit because of the tent. So I don't know where I would be able to put the bus and be able to have shore power. John's going to figure that out and let me know about that. But in the meantime, the bigger problem, they're still in there. They've got an armoire in there, a big one, some other big furniture like a couch and stuff. And so I can't really move in until they get out and they're nowhere to be found. So I don't know what their plan is. I don't want to be in a position where I have to rush again because first of all, I've got to completely unpack again. And if I have to be doing that like late into the night and then still setting up tables and still putting out merchandise tomorrow when the when the crowd starts to come through, I'm just going to lose out on opening day again, so that'll suck. So, I don't know. I'm just going to hang out because it's not like I have something else to go to. You know, I planned on being here for five days, so I may as well see how this plays out. I can always walk around because there's always plenty to look at, but the only danger there is that... I might want to buy something, and that's not in the cards right now. At least not until I find out if I'm going to be able to make any money. Can't spend any. Theoretically. Fingers crossed that this all works out. Well, more confusion. The people that were in that tent still haven't moved their stuff out, so I still can't even really get in there, which means I'm not going to necessarily have time to set up anyway, which kind of negates the whole thing. But the most interesting new fact to add to the mix is that two Brimfield fields are closed because of mud. One of them just closed outright. The other one stopped letting vendors in but is letting customers in because I guess you can walk around but you really can't park a truck anywhere so that could mean either of two things it could either mean that nobody comes because they say oh there's two fields that are closed and flooded so why go right so we might have less customers than usual but we might have more customers than usual and here's why I remember one time I was at a swap meet I went to the swap meet even though it was canceled because I didn't get the message that it was canceled. So there were only four vendors there, me and three other people. And then these customers came who they hadn't gotten the memo either, I guess. And they had money just burning a hole in their pockets. They were just dying to spend money. So the four of us, we got rich because these people spent all their money with us when they probably would have spread it out if there had been more people there, you know? So here we're a field that's open. Two fields are closed. It might be that more people come here. Maybe. Cowboy, want to take another walkie? <sighs> you know, I got to admit, when I'm not home, I worry about my mom. She's home alone. She doesn't like being home alone. So I'm getting my money back during a rainy show when normally I wouldn't be able to get my money back. I'd be basically stuck here during a rainy show. If they don't get their stuff out soon, I can't move in. If I can't move in, I won't have much time to prep. If I don't have much time to prep, then I'm not doing it. So I don't know. <laughs> Well, they're not back yet. It's five o'clock. I've been waiting four hours for them to come back. What if they've changed their mind? You know, what if I wait all this time and really they're coming back and they're gonna open up shop and sell tomorrow and they never get their stuff out tonight. I could be sitting here all night.
I'm going home. This could be the moment we've been waiting for The chance to feel alive Nothing's gonna stop us, nothing's gonna talk There's nothing like we've ever seen Leaving Broomfield And I raise my hand to the sky What a feeling Cause I feel like dancing high Got a feeling Time to feel it This is where it all begins My Brimfield acquisition. I had to get something. I thought the last Brimfield that I did was thwarted, but it was nothing compared to the thwarting that went on with this one. They did give me the great space for July. July's supposed to be pretty slow, but you know what? I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to have low expectations, and maybe I'll be surprised. It's very hard for me to keep my expectations low. I get excited about things, you know? I think this is going to be great. I have a picture in my head. Do you ever do that? You have a picture in your head of how something's going to look. And, and in my picture, in my head, we had the perfection stove going outside. And we had a table set. And we were having dinner. And it was a beautiful day. And everything was great. That was the picture that I had of what Brimfield was going to be. The picture wasn't me in mud up to my mid-calf, that's for damn sure. <sighs> Maybe that picture was of July, though. Maybe I was having a premonition of what July's going to be like. Okay, let's stay optimistic about that, okay? Bye-bye. Bye-bye. This is where it all begins.